One of the questions that I get asked the most and that I have seen in the online forums too many times is... Can I use my handheld walkie-talkie HT radio in my automobile car and use it like a mobile radio? And the answer is yes. So in this video, I will demonstrate just how easy it is to use your handheld HT walkie-talkie radio in place of a much more expensive and difficult to install mobile radio for your automobile car. And because it is actually very simple to do, this should be a fairly short video. And unlike all of those other YouTubers that stretch out their videos so they can jam more ads down your throat, unlike those other YouTubers, I would never waste your time because I fully understand that you have many very important TikTok videos to watch and probably a lot of very important video games to get through today. To use your HT handheld walkie-talkie radio in your vehicle car, you could just simply sit in your little Toyota or Honda Civic or even a very manly Jeep such as mine. You could just sit in it and just hold the radio and talk. However, the problem is that when you are sitting in your car vehicle, you are basically sitting inside of a very big metal box. And this can greatly reduce the FARs on your radio. When a big metal box blocks the RF electricities and radio waves like this, us radio experts refer to it as a Tesla cage. So to improve the FARs of your radio whilst driving around in your Tesla cage car, there are just a few simple things to do and also one very important setting that you will need to make on most HT handheld walkie-talkie radios to ensure that it operates optimally when using it in your mobile Tesla cage car. And when done correctly, in most cases and in most situations, using an HT handheld walkie-talkie radio in your car vehicle will work pretty much just as well as a dedicated mobile radio for off-roading, traveling in a group, etc., and so forth. However, it probably will not work quite as well for bouncing your signal off the moon, or doing other radio dork things. So if any online experts try to tell you that using an HT handheld walkie-talkie setup in your vehicle won't work, just remember that because some people are idiots, they have trouble understanding the differences between the concept of works fine for a normal person and will not work to bounce signals off of the moon. So first of all, of course, it should go without mentioning that the most important thing to have is the proper license or government permission slip for whatever type of radio you are using. This is what I use, which allows me to transmit on ham radio as much as I want and on GMRS, and it also proves that I am qualified to talk about radios and antennas on the YouTubes. Of course, you will also need an HT handheld walkie-talkie radio, which you probably already have, and you will need a mobile antenna. If your radio is a GMRS-flavored radio, it is important to get a GMRS-flavored antenna. If your radio is a ham radio, it is important that you get a ham or UHF antenna tuned specifically for whatever frequencies you desire to transmit on with said HT handheld walkie-talkie radio. Because I transmit most often on GMRS, I use the Midland MXTA26 GMRS antenna because it is pre-cut and pre-tuned for GMRS and it works right out of the sack. Affiliate link below. You will also need a mount to stick the antenna to your car vehicle, I recommend a magnetic mount because it is very easy to put on and take off. 
Some antennas come with the magnetic mount incorporated into the antenna itself, but most antennas require a separate mount. This is the one that I use every time I want to temporarily use a radio in one of my automobile cars. Affiliate link below. The connector on this type of antenna is called an NMO. NMO. You then just slap the antenna on the roof or hood or trunk of your car vehicle and carefully run the cable through the door or window. One word of warning, if some people tell you that the antenna must be placed exactly in the center or it will not work, or if they try to tell you that putting the antenna on the side of the fender will not work, just remind them that you are not trying to bounce your signal off the moon and that in the world of normal people, putting the antenna pretty much anywhere on the vehicle will work good enough for normal people. You can then very easily distract them by just telling them that you thought you heard someone transmitting without a license, and if they hurry, they can be the first to report them to the FCCs. Next, you will need to connect the PL259 cable connector that comes from your antenna to your HT handheld walkie-talkie radio. This can be done in a variety of ways via the use of various adapters and connectors and whatnot and such forth. But be aware that using this type of adapter may put a lot of unnecessary stress and strain on your very thick, rigid, big, black cable. So you might opt for a pigtail cable, which is much thinner and easier to move around. However, be aware that a low-quality pigtail will wear out and eventually pull apart and fall to pieces in your hand, so it is my radio expert opinion that you invest the extra $6 of monies and get yourself a slightly thicker, higher-quality one that hopefully will not wear out as fast. And contrary to what some people will try to tell you, you can also use various adapters to get the connectors to connect up with your radio and your cable correctly. But remember that each adapter will suck out a tiny percent of your RF electricities. So you want to use as few adapters as possible and keep everything as short and direct as you can. When you shop for your connectors, please be sure to purchase the right ones for your Pacific radio. Simply take note of the type of connection on your radio and then buy whatever you need. Most low-cost HT handheld walkie-talkie radios have what is called an SMA, SMA connector. And on most radios, that SMA connector is male meaning that it has a stiff little thing poking out. Some radios have a female connector, meaning that instead of a stiff little thing poking out, there is a hole. So just use your Xenu given powers of logic and reasoning to figure out which connector or adapters you will need to stick it all together. Now, some people will also tell you that you must, must, get an SWRs meter and check the SWRs of your antenna, and that your SWRs must be one-to-one -one or lower, or your radio will explode. And this is a lie and is not necessary. However, checking the SWRs with a SWRs meter is a good idea, but not for the reasons that some people people will try to tell you. Nay, it is just a good idea to make sure there are no broken connections or shorts between your radio and the antenna, which you would not be able to detect with your naked eyes. I use the Farzometer 2000, pronounced the Farzometer 2000, but this is just a very advanced version of the much less expensive SW102 SWRs meter. Affiliate link below. If after testing your SWRs with your SWRs meter, if it reads below three or so, then everything is just fine. However, if the SWRs reads 10 or 20, then something is very wrong with your cabling or your connectors, and further investigation should be initiated before using your radio. Optionally, you could also purchase a handheld microphone. Not only will this look much more cool and impress the chicks as you drive by your local middle school, 
But more importantly, it will save the wear and tear on the antenna wire connections, which I just mentioned only moments ago will eventually wear out and fall apart. When shopping for a handheld microphone, be sure to get the type that interfaces with your Pacific radio. Most cheap Chinese radios have what us radio experts refer to as a Kenwood or K1 type connector hole. But please refer to the user manual or sales ligature for your Pacific radio to see what type of holes it has. And one word of warning, many of the very cheap handheld microphones may make your voice sound like crap and make you difficult to understand when transmitting. So I recommend that you invest the extra few dollars of monies for a decent one and do not just buy the cheapest one you can find. And as long as I am talking about optional things, another optional thing you can get for most HT handheld walkie-talkie radios is a battery eliminator. This will allow you to plug your radio directly to your 12-volt nicotine delivery device ignition hole so that you can talk for as long as you feel necessary without any of the fear or anxiety of your battery ever running low. All you have to do is make sure that you purchase the correct battery eliminator designed specifically for your Pacific radio. You will know if it is the right one for your Pacific radio or not, by reading the words on the product description before you purchase it. And finally, the two most important things to do to ensure that your HT handheld walkie-talkie radio transmits correctly when using it in your automobile car. Obviously, it goes without saying that if you are traveling on the highway and you are using a GMRS radio, which is by far the most popular two-way radio service, in these United States, then you will want to use the official unofficial highway channel, which is GMRS channel 19. But I'm sure that you already knew that. And the most important thing to ensure that your HT handheld walkie-talkie radio works properly in your car automobile is correctly adjusting the setting in the menu for the transmission termination confirmation amplitude emission setting. You may need to check the manual for exactly how to adjust this setting on your Pacific radio and turn it on, but on this radio, it's menu option 39. 